Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. A fence is a stumbling stone. It's something that we trip over and it causes us to fall when we should be making progress. There's so many different ways that we get offended. And probably many of you and perhaps a lot of people watching by television are offended about something right now. And maybe you don't think it's really a big deal, but I think you'll see by the time I'm finished that it's a much greater deal than what you might think it is. How many of you know what it feels like to have a hangnail? It's like, you're okay, but then when you, when you, then you touch it, it's like, and then you think you're okay, and then you, Oh my, you just wonder how something that little can hurt that bad. Well, I think that offense is like a, a spiritual hangnail. I think it's like having a, having a hangnail in your spirit where there's just, there's this little irritation there, this little thing that's just bugging you and just keep thinking, eh, it's no big deal, it's no big deal. But you know, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And God does not want us to be offended. You can get offended at people. You can get offended at God. We're going to talk about that some this weekend. You know, there are people who, they love God. They believe in God. They go to church, but truth be known, they're just a little bit miffed, a little bit ticked off because God didn't answer their prayer. Their life didn't turn out the way they thought it should. They're a little disappointed with God. And you know, there's no reason at all to be ever disappointed with God because God is perfect and everything he does is right. We're the ones that goof up. And even if your life didn't turn out the way you thought it should, that doesn't mean that God doesn't have a better plan than you if you'll just give way to it. Amen? And um, we, we can be uh, offended at ourselves. I'm going to do a whole teaching about not offending yourselves while I'm here. We get offended at the government. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of talk about that today, isn't there? My goodness. Trouble, we get offended because we have trouble in our life. Uh, we get offended at stores where we shop, grocery store, clothing store. A young man that I know shared this with me the other day, and I thought, you know, he has no idea really that this is even harming him or could even be a problem. And he was just sharing with me how he'd taken his car in for some repairs, and the place where he took it gave him a a bid of $3,000, and he thought that was high, and so he took it somewhere else, and they ended up fixing the car for $1,000. So he, he has to drive by this first place that he went about four times a day, going to work, going home, going out to lunch, coming back, and he said, I am so aggravated at them. He said, I have just shut them out of my life, and when I drive by there now, it's like I don't even see them. <laughs> and I thought, what good's that doing? That's not going to put them out of business. They're not going to move. You know, the only one that hurts is you because every time you drive by there, now you're a little spiritual hangnail. Like, ooh, oh. And we don't even realize what it is. We get offended at traffic. We get offended at high prices. God's word can offend us if we don't want to hear it because we don't really want to do it. A preacher preaching on giving can offend us if we really don't want to give. Amen. Matthew 24, 10, first scripture tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the word. We love, 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 love your word. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 24 is a sign about end times. And uh, one of the signs of end times, it says many will be offended. Many will be offended offended and will begin to distrust and desert him whom they ought to obey and they will stumble and fall away. Now let me explain to you what that means, stumble and fall away. The word offense actually means to cause to stumble. It's a, it, it also is translated from a Greek word scandalon which means the part of the trap that the bait hung on that lured in the animal for capture. So let's just say it like this. Satan 
is constantly trying to get us offended because if we take that bait, amen, if we take that bait, then we come into his trap and he can do a lot of damage in our lives. Many were offended at Jesus, and the Bible calls him a rock of offense, a stone that they stumbled over. Well, what, is, what does that mean? Well, I've got a nice big rock up here so we can realize this. Now, you know, if I'm walking along and I'm not paying any attention, then I, oh, then I stumble. If you fall down and hurt yourself bad enough, it can keep you from going any further. And you might say that all along our path in life, there's all kinds of stumbling stones. One word that's translated offense says a little, a little stone. What if there were just a bunch of little stones up here? You know, we think little things don't matter, but you know what? I believe if we don't learn how to be faithful in little things, we will never, ever, ever be made ruler over greater things. So I want us to pay attention to this stuff tonight. It's considered to be a, a stumbling place. We get off track. We get, you're growing in God, you're hearing the word, you're, you're going to church, you're growing, everything's great. Uh, you get mad at somebody. You get angry at the preacher. You get offended because you weren't asked to be on the worship team or whatever. Now all of a sudden, you can't grow anymore. You can't go anymore because you're sitting off all mad somewhere. And you know what? It didn't change a thing. The only thing it changed was you. When are we ever going to get smart enough to stop doing things that don't do any good? Amen? Now, I know this doesn't apply to any of you. I'm, <laughs> I'm well aware that you've just gathered in this building tonight so you could buy this deep CD for somebody else you know that's like this. But <laughs> since you're here, I'll just pretend like maybe a few of you might need it. And if you don't, I'll preach to myself. In the last days, now offense has always been around since the beginning of time, but one of the signs of the end times is that in the last days, many will be offended. So we need to understand that there's a greater attack from the enemy of offense than at any other time in history. Let me tell you what, if he can keep us all mad, then he's going to have his way. Because in verse 12 of that same chapter, it says, and the love of the great body of people will grow cold. In Matthew 24, 12, the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied wickedness and lawlessness that's in the land. The love of the great body, not the love of the world. We are the great body that he's talking about there. The love of the great body will grow cold. Why? Because many are offended. You know what happens? Offense is a little thing. Just some little something happens that bugs you. And then another little something happens. And then another little something happens. And we think all these little things don't make any difference. And so we go to church and we have all these little things in us. And we're reading our Bible and we have these little things in us. And we're praying and we have these little things in us. And then, then maybe we see somebody that, that we've got one of these little things in us against. And, and we kind of just go the other way or we kind of just get this little... <laughs> indignant little look or feeling, you know, and uh, we, we think that they don't matter. But what's happening is it's causing our love to grow cold. Offense is like the first little teeny tiny hangnail. And if we keep that, then we can become angry. Then we can get resentful. Then we can get indignant. Then we can get bitter. Then we can get a full-blown case of unforgiveness, and then we can even begin to hate people if we don't do something about it. You know, the best time to take care of any problem is when it's a little problem. Did you hear me? The, be the best time to forgive somebody is the minute that they hurt your feelings. The best time to decide you're not going to be offended is the moment that you begin to feel that offense. Don't give the devil time to let anything that's going to hurt you take roots in your life. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, resist the devil at his onset. Resist the devil at his onset. Watch and pray, the Bible says. Be on guard. Watch and pray. And if there's anything that we need to be careful about, it's that we can get up every day and say, God, I am not mad at anybody. I am not offended at anybody. I don't have any resentment in my heart. Man, does that make you free 
to pray and to worship and to go out and love people. And can I tell you something? Loving people is the highest form of spiritual warfare that any one of us can ever do. If you want to defeat the devil, just learn how to be a red hot on fire lover of people. And we can't do that with a bunch of offense on the inside of us. Many will be offended and the love of the great body of people will grow cold because of the multiplied wickedness and lawlessness in the land. Many people today in our society, amazingly, are offended at God. I mean, they're just offended by the thought of God. They're offended by the Ten Commandments. They're offended by prayer. Well, you can't have that. You can't pray in school. That offends me. You can't have those Ten Commandments. That, that offends me. Well, can I tell you why it offends them? Because they don't want to do it. That's the only reason why anybody is ever offended by Jesus is because they simply do not want to submit to what he's asking people to do. It's rebellion that causes that. There's no, how, could any, how could you find anything wrong with God? I mean, that, that's just like, I'm sorry, but that's ignorance gone to seed. I mean, how can you find anything wrong with God? There's nothing that he says or does that's not good. And everything, every single thing that God asks us to do or not to do is not for him. It's for us. He's trying to show us how to have a better life. Even in preaching to you all weekend, don't be offended. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. It's not for God. It's for you. It's for you. Because the less offense we take the better our life is going to be. The happier we're going to be. The more peace we're going to have. The more we're going to love people. The less authority the devil is going to have over us in our life. Everything, everything that God asks us to do. And I'm kind of stuck on that lately. I started saying that last year, and it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger in me. It's like, I mean, do we really think that all this stuff that we hear is that... The only reason why God gets happy when we do it is because it helps us have a better life. We don't need to do this stuff. It doesn't change God. He is what he is. But everything that he tells us to do is for us. We, we just need to stop acting like, oh, that's so hard. How can you expect me to do that? And I, man, that's hard. That's really hard. It's, Oh, this Christian life is really hard. No, being a, being a sinner is hard. I mean, not having any forgiveness, not having any hope, not having any relationship with God. Now that's hard. So just remember, everybody who's out there trying to get rid of God, the only reason why they don't want God is because they don't want to do what God asks them to do. If they thought that they could do whatever they wanted to and have God, every one of them would believe in God. Because why would you not? Amen. Next time that you feel like God's prompting you to do something and you don't really want to do it, say out loud, this is going to be good for me. <laughs> this is going to be so good for me. And the next time that you want to do something and you get a prompting that you shouldn't do it, no matter how much you want to do it, you say, if God is showing me not to do this, it's going to be good for me if I don't do it and bad for me if I do it. <laughs> Everything God tells you to do or not to do is actually for you. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Philippians 1, 9 and 10. And this I pray, Paul said, this I pray. That your love might abound yet more and more and extend to its fullest development in knowledge and all keen insight. And that your love might display itself in a greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment. So that you might surely learn to sense and prize what is vital, approve and prize what is excellent and of real value. Recognizing the highest and the best, distinguishing the moral differences, and that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless 
so that with heart sincere and certain and unsullied you may approach the day of Christ not stumbling nor causing others to stumble remember offense is a stumbling stone it's something that we trip over and it causes us to fall when we should be making progress and he said this I pray that your love might abound yet more and more and that you would not take offense that you would not give offense let love keep you at all times in a place where you're loving people rather than being angry at them and Paul said I pray this for you that your love would abound yet more and more I've been studying the love walk for many many years and I need it I studied on a regular basis because we are pretty inherently selfish and self-centered and so I find that studying love does me more good and makes me happier than anything I've found out a secret and that is the more I love other people the happier I get I don't know how that math works but it just does the more you love other people the more you get your mind off yourself the more you stop trying to do for yourself and you do for other people the more God does for you and the happier you get it's the wildest thing I've ever seen <laughs> sounds like it might be a God thing you think because you know most of the stuff that God does doesn't compute according to the world system the first or last the last or first if you want more give away some of what you got it's like hmm what tilt tilt if you want to be happy don't try to make yourself happy try to make somebody else happy and then you'll be happy it's like wow and it really works Psalm 119 165 says great peace have those who love your law nothing shall offend them or make them stumble now let's talk again about the kinds of offense seven types of offense we can take offense don't take offense at that we say don't take offense we'll see when we have an opportunity to be offended we can take it or we can refuse it we don't have to take it just because the opportunity is there to be offended that doesn't mean we have to take it matter of fact you can even say under your breath I don't take that <laughs> I refuse to be offended don't have any time to mess with that do you know that offense I want you to get this if you don't remember anything else because I know sometimes we hear these sermons and we go and we love to be here and we're, and we're even listening but by tomorrow if we can remember three sentences we're blessed <laughs> thank God for the recorded message so if you get one that really means a lot to you you can listen to it over and over and over and over until you finally got that one amen, amen. but try to try to remember this offense is totally unproductive it steals your peace your joy your energy your power and can even steal your health and yet it produces absolutely nothing so why in the world would we bother with anything that is that useless somebody say amen. amen so there's taking offense there's giving offense and you know we want to be careful about that too I mean just just thinking a little bit before we say something can just save so many people from having to try to fight not getting their feelings hurt just give a little tiny bit of thought before we open our mouth and let words roll out people get offended by the truth they get offended by trouble they get offended at God we can offend the Holy Spirit the Bible says do not grieve vex sadden or offend the Holy Spirit now you know the very thoughts of offending the Holy Spirit should really put the reverential fear and awe of God in all of us who in the world would want to offend the Holy Spirit and you know if you study the scriptures around that that verse in Ephesians 430 it's pretty clear that the thing that offends the Holy Spirit is when we fight and don't get along and we stay angry and don't have peace with one another and don't walk in love I think more than anything God wants his people to get along we need to have unity not disunity because where there's unity there's anointing and there's blessing we don't talk enough about the anointing in the church anymore and we need the anointing of God some young believers don't even know what the anointing is and Christ is the anointed one the anointing is the power and the presence of God 
my goodness, if I didn't have God's anointing, I don't know what I'd do because I don't do anything very fancy. I talk a lot. I mean, like really a lot. And the words that come out of my mouth better be anointed. And I'll tell you something that I've learned. I cannot have strife at home. I cannot carry offense in my heart. I cannot be angry and be anointed. And neither can you. You say, well, you know, you're a preacher. I get that for you, but I'm not a preacher. I have to worry about that. Let me tell you something. You need an anointing to get in and out of the grocery store and stay sane. You need an anointing to raise your children. You need an anointing to be married. Especially if you're going to stay married to the same person for a long time. Dave and I have been married 46 years. That takes an anointing. How many of you agree we all need the presence and the power of God on our lives? Now listen to this. There's not going to be any offense in heaven. <laughs> Matthew 13, 41 says, When Christ sends the reaper angels, they will gather up all offense. It's not going to go into heaven with you. Let's talk about love for a few minutes. You know, offense is like that spiritual hangnail that keeps us from really loving people. And when we've got unforgiveness are I'm really trying to not even talk about unforgiveness tonight I want to talk what I think precedes it I, I want to talk about these little hangnail things that I think we get that we don't pay any attention to that then actually become bigger problems in our life and they affect our relationship with God they affect our prayers they affect our worship but because we don't deal with the little stuff how many of you agree that sometimes we just don't deal with because we think it's no big deal well, that, well, you offended me. It's not my fault that I'm offended. You offended me. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the thing. Each and every one of us, we have to take responsibility for our own lives. It's my responsibility before God to receive his grace to not be offended. I don't care if you did try to offend me. And even if you tried to do it on purpose, I have to be responsible not to take that. And what we do is we blame how we feel on everybody else. Well, yeah, I'm offended, but you offended me. I don't need to change. You need to change. You need to always make me feel good. Then I won't ever get mad. <laughs> you know, you're only laughing because you know it's true. <laughs> I recall very well when God began to teach me, Dave is not responsible for your joy. If I was unhappy, I always came up with some reason, something he should be doing. Well, if you would do this, I'd be happy. And if you wouldn't do this, I'd be happy. And if you would this, I'd be happy. And if you wouldn't this, I'd be happy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I wonder how many people are sitting in here tonight and watching by TV and you've got some unhappiness in your life or, or maybe, you know, even something worse. I mean, you're just really unhappy. You're angry or, or maybe you're even like in the real deep depression or something. And you're like, well, you know, if this person would do this and if they would do this and if my boss would do that and if my neighbors would do this, then I'd be okay. Here's the thing. We got to learn how to deal with stuff in life and still stay godly because even if that thing you've got now disappeared, there'll be something else chasing right behind it. Amen. Life is full of interruptions and annoyances, and life is not going to change. So I finally figured out I needed to let God change me. So I, so I finally realized, you know what? I, Dave is not responsible for my joy. Somebody else is not responsible to keep me fixed all the time. It's not somebody else's responsibility to make me feel good about myself all the time and to make me feel secure. It's my responsibility to know who I am in Christ and to receive what I need from Him and to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Then I can't be controlled and manipulated by everybody else out there and what they decide to do or not do on any given day. Come on. You know, it's really important that we learn to recognize and resist the temptation to be offended if we want to have God's peace, joy, and power in our lives. Remember, if we allow ourselves to be offended, we hinder God's plan for us in every area of life.
je kindertijd. Een tijd om te dansen in de zon en te zingen in de regen. Een tijd om uitbundig te lachen en onbekommerd op avontuur te gaan. En om je vervelende broertje te plagen. Kind zijn betekent leren, groeien, geloven en dromen. Maar ook nu zijn er op de wereld heel veel kinderen die geen idee hebben van hoe je kindertijd zou moeten zijn. Ze zijn alleen bezig met overleven. Deze kleintjes moeten s'nachts vaak slapen zonder een dak boven hun hoofd. Ze hebben dorst, lijden honger en voelen zich eenzaam. Sommige van hen hebben zichzelf die dag meermalen moeten verkopen... voordat ze hun misbruikte lichaam te rusten kunnen leggen. Helaas is dit niet een verhaaltje over een handvol kinderen in een onzichtbare wereld. Nee, het is een keiharde werkelijkheid. Hier en nu, voor echte kinderen. Onze kinderen. Sommigen leven bij jou om de hoek. Anderen hier vele duizenden kilometers vandaan. Maakt die afstand dat een kind minder behoefte heeft aan liefde, bescherming en verzorging? Maken geslacht, ras of omstandigheden dat een kind minder deel uitmaakt van onze menselijke familie? Nee, toch? Een mens is een mens. Een nood is een nood. En een kind is een kind. Zo kostbaar in Gods ogen. In welke uithoek van de wereld een kind ook om hulp roept... wij moeten er gehoor aan geven. Op welke grond de tranen van een kind ook vallen... wij gaan erheen. We have traveled long. die ons hun steun waard vinden, zijn wij in staat om vele hulpbehoevende kinderhanden vast te pakken. Maar er zijn nog veel meer kinderen op de wereld die schreeuwen om hulp. Geeft u daar gehoor aan? Ze zijn op zoek naar een helpende hand. Helpt u ons mee om ze die te bieden?
ik heb gelijk. Die ander heeft het fout. Eén woord te veel en je hebt een knallende ruzie. En niemand heeft het gewild. Het kan ook anders. En ontdek nu hoe. Nu verkrijgbaar van Joyce Meyer. Leven zonder conflicten. Bestel nu het boek Leven zonder conflicten via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Het computerteam van Joyce Meyer Ministries werkt met man en macht aan onze Nederlandse website. They're faster speed and they're going to have a much better web-based experience. Well, I'm just curious. If we would add a Series 12 flux capacitor, wouldn't we gain as much as a terabyte in data encryption? Wow, that's really out of the box thinking. What's your name? Joyce. That's the kind of stuff that's going to make JoyceMeyer.org a better website. Ga naar onze nieuwe site joyce-meyer.nl en volg ons op Facebook.